Hello, GP. Boop, boop, boop. We're going mountain biking today because I'm sick of waiting for the parts for my plane. And uh, I need to post something to YouTube. So here are the 10 things that I don't really like about my Jeep. Number one, I love the sound of a V6 or any six cylinder. I had an old 1993 4.0 Jeep YJ. And that thing sounded awesome. It sounded like a tractor or something with a big diesel. Uh, the new JL Wranglers don't really have the best exhaust note. So here's a cold start. See what I mean? I'll give you a little rev too. Not exactly something to write home about. Now I think about it, I kind of miss my old 1993 Jeep. Such a great car. No air conditioning, 130 degrees inside the cab. Anyway, next thing is this beautiful straight windshield. See how nice and flat it is, how vertical it is, which means everything bounces and cracks it. Yeah, luckily Jeep offers a factory warranty on the windshield, so that will be happening sometime next week. But every time it happens, you just die a little inside. You know, whether it's rocks, something else, branches, you know. This big old crack down to here, down to the base, the rock chip. Yeah, no bueno. Next is the tech. You know, the Rubicon has a lot of cool technology in it that makes it great for off-roading. But then it also lacks some of the creature comforts. For instance, uh, keyless start. So I just go in, put my foot on the clutch, hit the start button. But there's no keyless entry. Nothing. So I still have to get my key out of my pocket, unlock it, go in, then start the car. You know, I don't know how much it would have been, how difficult it would have been for Jeep to integrate a sensor right here where I could lock and unlock. Because uh, I know the Jeep Cherokee Trailhawks have it. Not the Wrangler Rubicon. On the same tech line, let's hop in the vehicle. So we have all these goodies down here. Got my soy bar disconnect, my front and rear locker or rear only. Now, these are great, but as you can see, I'm going to push the button and nothing happens. That's because it tells me I need to be in four-wheel drive in order to do so. Now, there are times on the trail, it's not exactly a difficult trail, but there are some potholes. And you know what? Disconnecting the sway bar when you're going... 20 miles an hour down potholed riddled road makes a huge difference when it comes to comfort. Now I know I can get a JL taser and update that. I just wish that, you know, there were things that were thought about when it comes to that sort of uh, comfort mindset. On top of that, if you're in four wheel drive and you do have the sway bar disconnected, you can't go more than 22 or 25 miles an hour uh, and then it automatically reconnects it. So you might be holding up traffic on an easy road, but you still want to have the sway bars disconnected. Tech front, it's got some cool things and some bad things. Yeah. The infotainment center, very nice. It's got Apple CarPlay, you know, air conditioning, which my old Jeep YJ didn't have. But yeah, that's annoying because I have it. And sometimes when I want to use it, I can't. One last thing on the tech front, auto start stop. Now, I've got a manual and I can actually beat the car starting up into first gear. So the way it works is you come to a stoplight, put it in neutral, the car shuts off. 
Then when you're ready to go, put your foot on the clutch, that's when it starts back up. But I'm already clutch in first gear and ready to go by the time the car is only three quarters through its start cycle. So I wish you could go into the settings. I know again, Jail Taser fixes this. I wish you go into the settings, default it to off. So now it is off. Last thing before we get on the road, the air conditioning noise. AC is off at the moment. It's coming on. And just wait. gets even worse on a really hot day. Right now it's only about 80 degrees. Now, I know you just thought, saw the thermometer, but we've been sitting in the sun for a while. It's about 80 degrees at the moment. This thing howls. That noise howls. And it's kind of embarrassing when you're uh, in a parking lot and it seems like your car is overheating because the fan's going. It's really not, it's just the air conditioning. All right, let's go on the road. All right, next thing up is rev hang. Modern cars have this problem when it comes to manual transmissions, but rev hang, due to uh, fuel efficiency and smoothness of the engine, is a big problem when it comes to modern manual transmission cars. So we're gonna come up to a stop sign right here, and I'll show you what I mean. All right, first gear. Second gear, waiting for the revs to jump. But I'm already in second gear. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Third gear. Now, I'm ready to go already, but see that? That's because I let the clutch out too fast and uh, the revs got caught with the clutch. Now, my old BMW, my old Focus, you know, that technology wasn't really a thing. On these modern cars, in order to help fuel economy standards, I'm forced to sit there and wait for the revs to drop to make it a smooth gear shift. And you can kind of hear the air conditioning gone. It is not a pleasant sound. Alright, next thing funky about the Jeep was a problem until I went to Oshkosh last year. That was about 16 hours of driving in this thing. But it's the play off center, or the play in the steering in general. You know, big, beefy, um, live axles, front and rear, and it's just, you know, it's not normal. It's, it's different from every car I've driven. And I get it, you need to have the play to have the articulation for when you're off-roading, but still, it really does fatigue you on longer road trips. So, take a look. So we're going straight. And I'm constantly, I'm constantly searching for the lane. You know, it's not a, not a terrible thing for around town but it's something you notice when you're driving more than an hour or two. Like, I can do this and nothing happens. Yeah, that's, that's old car stuff, but I get it. I get why that's the thing. It's just something I wish I had known before I got the car and did long road trips with it. Look at that view. Look at it, it's just incredible. Colorado is such a cool state. So much to offer. Of course, Colfax have so much to offer, though. Mile High City for a reason. Be better if there wasn't a crack in the windshield, but it's beautiful. Next up is acceleration. So, here's a little run for you. Second gear, full throttle. and 60. So, it's not 
slow. It's not slow, slow like an older car, but it's definitely not fast. The Focus ST, obviously, is significantly faster than this. But, you know, as long as you shift higher in the rev range, it can get up and move. It's just not, you know, it's not a sports car. Did you miss that about my Focus? You know, you could just sit there, mash the gas, and then go for it. Ooh, that doesn't look good. Damn. Alright, on ramp. Two more things that really get on my nerves. One, the fender cracks. So right in there, you can see little rocks get stuck. Let's see, there's another one. Now on the other side, got debris, leaves more little rocks yeah that's annoying know that there are products out there to solve that problem but i don't want to have to pay to prevent rocks from getting stuck in places they're not supposed to be and finally the trailer hitch so this thing i installed it myself but the four bolts didn't line up. It was almost like the build quality was kind of poor in that little section. So underneath, you have four bolts. One, two, three, four. Three of them went in nice and smooth. The last one was a pain. And then uh, trailer hitch options. You know, door opens. Uh-oh, get stuck. Get stuck right there. So I might weld something up, cut it there, move this down there and weld it. I haven't decided yet. It's probably a lot of work for something that I don't really care about that much. But I do have a welder, two welders actually. Also, when you're off-roading, the roof tends to do this little creaking noise. Now, right now everything's heated up, so I'm not gonna really experience it, but you know, when you're off-road and the whole body's flexing around, these pieces, these pieces right here, uh, tend to make a little bit of noise. So, anyway. Thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully the next video will be about the Bearhawk again. And we'll see you on the next one. See ya.